Hello, this is Alan with uh, Collecting Mags. I'm going to go over some of the uh, stuff I just received back from ComC. Uh, a lot of this stuff I've actually gone through and starting to do a bunch of TTM, but I wanted to go over just a few of them that are still hanging around um, for right now. And then I kind of want to go into one of a player that I'm kind of starting to collect and going kind of the backstory of kind of why I'm collecting him. And yeah, but kind of the first one, um, Lou Whitaker. I kind of wanted to start getting some of his stuff. So I got this and then I got the rookie and I figure this is a, I, for some reason, a future Hall of Famer and not currently a Hall of Famer. That's one of those that still kind of confuses me as far as how he's not in the Hall of Fame. But his rookie card I have going out, doing the rounds, he's on you know the four, four different uh, <clears throat> players that are on the same card. So, um, gonna start with the other other three and work my way to Lou Whitaker because he's you know I kind of worked my way from the I guess least impressive career up to the most impressive career just in case it's you lose it in the via TTM and then eventually get over to Lou Whitaker so hopefully that um, also picked up as Tony Gwynn rookie again you can kind of pick these up for pretty cheap both of these and then kind of two players that are kind of intertwined. And I'll start with the one that's you'll know the name of. It's Frank Robinson. Picked up a couple of his cards because, again, they were just um, kind of on the cheap. And I love this uh, 74. Always like those 74s. They're just really, really great images on the 74. It's kind of like one of my, one of those sets that Tops did really, really well on. And the uh, 75s are always kind of those infamous colors. But really, really great. Really, really underrated player. Um, always enjoy him. And... The player that's kind of tied with him, or I guess the player that uh, goes back into being associated with Frank Robinson is uh, more kind of his note to fame. And somebody that I'm going to start collecting is Milk Pappas. Uh, so he's going to be my new PC. This is his rookie card, and I'm not going to get any of his stuff graded. It's not really worth worth it, but... Yeah, he had a he had a really good career. I mean, he's always tied for being, or kind of tied to that uh, notoriety of being traded for Frank Robinson, um, because the uh, the Reds thought Frank Robinson was too old and was done for, but Milt pa they basically needed some pitching over in Cincinnati, and Milt Pappas was. Kind of uh, able to be traded. So he went over there, um, kind of started out with, uh, with the Orioles, and then went over to the Reds, and then kind of bounced around a little bit, uh, eventually ending up with the Cubs. So ended up with 209 wins and is in the Orioles Hall of Fame. And uh, also threw a no-hitter in 1972 with the with the Cubs so let's get into some more his cards and then kind of talk about it but there's the 60 I got a couple of those now and I had to pick up the all the Cubbies cards that he had so the 71 and then the infamous 72 It's just a, oops, super off-center on back. Actually probably miscut more so than off-center. But it looks really good on the front. I mean, obviously top to bottom, but I'm not super concerned regarding that. I'm, that's not my, as long as the color is nice. I'm more of a color sharpness picture person rather than a centering. Um, 
But yeah, in 1972, he had a no. He was actually going into one last strike to have a perfect game. Um, and he had a 2-2 two, two count. And uh, the umpire called the next two pitches balls. And they were I guess they were really close. And they, he still had a feud like 25 years later. I think they, they brought him on in like 2008 to like a Cubs game and we're just where they called up the uh, the announcer or the, the announcers called up the, uh, the umpire and Milt Pappas was there and they were just yelling at each other like on air during this during this game so kind of a kind of a funny situation where that was going on because he was still pretty bitter about it but um Kind of getting into that, uh, I'm just kind of kind of trying to collect some uh, some Greek heritage players. Uh, that's kind of my my shtick at the moment a little bit. So it's not really super actively like I'm seeking it out, but um, especially on like ComC. So kind of my thought is I what I what I sent to ComC were essentially old basketball cards. I don't really collect basketball anymore, and don't really want to collect basketball anymore. I have no desire. I'm not super interested in the game too much anymore. Uh, so kind of getting rid of a lot of a lot of that collection and moving almost solely into uh, baseball and then kind of have some other stuff regarding like running and a little bit of soccer as well. So those will be kind of my main focuses. Uh, have almost zero football cards with the exception of a couple autographs of people that are meaningful but uh, that's kind of where a little bit of uh, collecting is at and then a little bit about uh, Milt Pappas so definitely uh, intertwined between the two uh, obviously Frank Robinson definitely had a Hall of Fame career but I always feel like there's some you know players that are out there that still just need to be collected and kind of their stories just rem remembered. Um, prior to Carlos Zambrano's uh, no-hitter, Milt Pappas had had the only no-hitter that the Cubs were involved in from like the 70s up until, and I can't remember off the top of my head when Carlos Zambrano threw his no-hitter, but that was the only no-hitter that they were involved in, either against or for. So it was quite a, quite a long stretch there, almost 30 years or so. Um, but yeah, these are just some of the pickups. I figured I'd show them off a little bit, and hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks. Bye.